What's going on, people? If you like the content of this video, and you will, you know what to do. Hit the I, tap it. It feels good. Saw a comment, and I took advantage of an opportunity because it was about starting businesses and how unfair the world is to women business, you know, getting them. And I was like, I know quite a few women who own businesses. I know a lot. And today I was at the establishment of one and I had a little chat with her. If I'd been thinking, I think she probably would have recorded, but I didn't do it. I was just asked her. And I asked her this question. Because she owns two businesses. And I was like, do you think that it's harder for women to own businesses than men? And she said, without flinching, no. What she said was that frequently it's in the head of the woman that she can't do it. That's what she said, this female business owner. And I, I and we went on to have a very, very good conversation about a lot of things, which kind of goes back to one of the things that I talked about from day one. If you think you cannot do it, you will not do it. Uh, we also talked about family, and she just, you know, offers herself up. It's like sometimes, you know, your family is your worst enemy. Uh, her words, they will either break you and make you. Once again, she owns a business. She's owned a business for a while. So she knows the landscape. She knows the game. And it, it really got me to thinking because we had this conversation. We talked about a lot of different things, uh, entrepreneurship, drive, uh, starting stuff, because she started in real estate when she was 19. So she got started in the business world really, really early. And I looked at this and uh, she said something else too that I thought was very, very important, which I do agree with. It A lot of this training starts early when you're a kid because she has two kids and she's like, you know, we don't use the word can't. We use uh, I may feel challenged. I require help, could you assist me? But we don't use the word can't. This is what she's teaching her kids, her and her husband. And I just listened to that, and that's very, very important because we started talking about internal dialogue, negative self-talk, many of the things I've been telling you for years. Now, if you, you know, if you saw the video, <laughs> there are no social programs for men. And, you know, because some people got offended. Uh, fortunately, it was it was very positively received. I haven't gotten one sideways crazy message in my inbox. So that's pretty good. But you know, if you are female, if you're a woman and you think you can't start a business, you are a hundred percent correct. If you are a woman, if you're a female and you think you can start a business, once again, you are a hundred percent correct. Because What's happening is there's a lot of assumptions being made. There are many people who are settling for bullshit and they're settling for, you know, scraps of life versus doing the hard work. And I, I want to tell you some stuff. You can't become the person that you want to be by being who you are. If who you are was good enough to get it, you would have what you want. If you don't have what you want, being who you are will not lead you to become who you want to be. You have to change. You have to grow. You have to think differently. And, you know, speaking to everybody, because, you know, the title of this is probably going to be something crazy because I hadn't decided. There's like four different concepts. But essentially, starting a business is not this mythical esoteric thing it is having a service it is having a product and is creating a transaction point in receiving cash or a credit card that is business that's it the other stuff is peripheral it surrounds it you can make it as simple as you want it or as complicated as you want now that's the beginning as it goes on, as it grows, things will change. But if you want to grow yourself, build something, it's going to take a different level of thought. 
a different level of action, a different level of accountability. Because I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's no room on this channel for scared little bitches. None. Because if you are a coward, if you continue to do things that you know that are not right for you and your family, and then whine about it, you are essentially stacking bullshit on top of bullshit, on top of bullshit, on top of bullshit, on top of bullshit, and you wonder why your breath stinks. I mean, seriously, because I've looked at some things and I've examined a lot of social issues and many people's like, well, Glendon, I'm here just for business advice. If you haven't been paying attention, and if you say that, you haven't been paying attention, you have to know what's going on in the world. If you go back to Peter Lynch of um, Merle Lynch fame, and he picked Walmart before anyone else, is he used it on the advice of his wife. He's like, hey, what do you like? And all the places that she said were popping, he invested in and made himself and his investors a ton of money. You have to know what's going on in the world. You cannot live in a cave. You cannot be insular. You cannot be isolated. And many people are that way because they don't really constructively digest their content. If the same rigorous mental application that you use to say, hey, I'm going to spend money with Glendon or I'm not going to spend money with Glendon because the application that you use is enhanced because money's it's like I don't care if it's a dollar you still think about that whereas if it's uh take this thing with Ray Rice it is all over Facebook people are talking about it folks are having passionate debates and I sat back and I was like you don't debate this hard about things that are in your wheelhouse that impact you daily you don't have this kind of debate because it's safe. It's easy to talk about Ray Rice, his wife, the NFL, but it's very, very hard to talk about your sorry ass life and facilitating change. Because that would require action and that would require a rigorous application of why are things this way, why are they not this way. You would actually have to work. It's very easy to become distracted and piss away your day debating concepts that really don't matter to you because I said this before and I'll say it again I was pissed off when Solange went after JC I abhor all fucking forms of violence all of it no one should be hitting anyone and until you get to that level of disgust with all violence you're bullshit and you're part of the problem and I just saw that and I wish I wish 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 that people would put this kind of energy that they put into this Ray Rice debate into creating a business for their family and you know their future. Now, I just got disgusted because I uh, you know I don't know if you know like if you're one of my Facebook friends, you know if they ain't shit on my page, my personal page. I put myself on the Facebook moratorium because. I believe as wonderful as the connectivity of Facebook is, it's absolutely horrible in terms of creating long lasting connections. It creates many tertiary connections. It creates things that are, you know, very temporary, but deep abiding connections, mm, not so much. And I really had to say, is this a good use of my time? And the answer was no, it's not. So I actually relinquished it and just focused my uh, energies and efforts on other things. Now, you know, people are like, oh, I want to be your friend. I don't know what for because you ain't going to see shit there. <laughs> Not on my personal page. Very rarely will I post anything on there because I am about, I want you to be successful, okay? I want you to be successful. And from my journey, the one that I took, Success is not going to come from you jacking off on Facebook. It's not going to come from you thinking about doing something. It's going to come from you actually doing something. So if you are one of those people, and I will touch on the whining crew. Yes, I'm saying whining crew. Women, minorities, 
or people presume. I don't even like that term minority because I don't feel like a fucking minority. I feel like a fucking majority. I feel fucking supreme. I don't even ex I don't even use that word. I use it so you can understand what I'm talking about. But in my life, I am not a minority. I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> you gotta think it. If I don't think highly of myself, why should you? So, all of this talk of disadvantaged groups, I think is harmful. And, you know, I didn't think this way all of my life. But once you cross the other side and you make this transition, and that's why I'm creating this course from employer, employee to employer, you know, the ment you know, mentally becoming a boss, you don't you your perspective isn't big enough to shape these ideals. Just because you have the ability to form an opinion doesn't mean you need to. Yeah, I said that. I see many people forming opinions. Well, I have an opinion. I can okay. It's stupid. Because you formed your opinion on half the information. Like uh, the dumbass that thinks that I am selling courses teaching people how to sell on eBay for two hundred dollars. Anyone that knows me, anyone that's been on this channel knows that is a fucking joke. That is insane. I just despise eBay. I mean, I, it is commonly known in the culture that I am an eBay hater. Guilty. So, just to show you how uninformed people are and how many people choose to remain ignorant. If you want to be successful. Like I said, I want you to be successful. I want you to grow. I want you to have stuff. I want you to be like me. In the middle of the day, fucking driving around Atlanta, talking shit on the video because you can. Not because you're at some job. Not because you're somewhere you don't want to be having your fucking soul sucked out of your body day by day by day by day. Day by day. We will have the walking dead. The walking dead is here. You see them? That person that's shuffling around in the coffee shop, that's moving around slow in the in the grocery store because 75% of their soul has been sucked out of them. They're just waiting to die. Do you want to be that person? Do you want to be that person? No, you don't. You shouldn't be. Will starting a business be easy? No, it may be the hardest thing you've ever done in your fucking life. It may test you on levels that you've never been tested. It may push you around. At times, that business may kick your ass but it'll make a better man or woman out of you it'll give you a new perspective it'll give you new abilities it'll give you a new way of living because you know I'm a college dropout I'm not the smartest person in the room I just work harder than most people that's it that's it you don't have to be smart talent is overrated effort is underrated you put out, and then let's do this little test. Starting the day, I want you to do this. Take the challenge. I fucking challenge you. No ice required. For the next week, work hard as you can on everything. Don't coast on a fucking thing. Work as hard as you can on everything. And at the end of that week, see what happens. I can guarantee you, your life will be better. I can guarantee it. But hey, don't believe me. Take the challenge. Go through that. And if you are a woman, please take some soap and wash that nonsense out of your head about you can't start a business or it's going to be hard. Because the thing is, and as a marketer, and if you're a marketer, you already know this, the number one most powerful economic group in this country is women. So how can you be economically powered and disadvantaged at the same time? That's called incongruency. It doesn't work out. It doesn't mesh. It's like oil and water. It's just like, ah, oh, nah, I don't like you. I'm not going to hang out with you. And ocean. So you can't be both. Number one, most economically powerful group in the country is women. But you're disadvantaged. Bullshit. Many of you don't want to work that hard. Yeah, I said it. That's it. You just don't want to work that hard. You marry, you rather marry a troll that you don't think is attractive because he keeps you from working that hard. Yeah, I said that. I've seen it too many times. And when the money runs out, the honey runs out. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
uh, private. I can't. I want to talk about it so bad, but I can't do that to my boy. Whew, he's hurting enough as it is right now. But um, do it. Work hard. Build yourself. Edify yourself. And create that life that you want. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side. And remember, if you like the content of this video, tap it. It feels good. Just trust, tap it. It feels good. Tap it. Trust me on that.